Hi guys, Mac here again. Now today I want to talk about storage again, and in particular this device here. This is a Sabrent Rocket XTRM-Q 2TB Thunderbolt 3 SSD. Now let's get it out of the box. There are a few things that are quite interesting about this unit that uh, I think we should have a look at. Firstly, let's have a look at the unit itself. There you go. It's quite small. It's certainly smaller than the Samsung X5s that I tend to use. Let's also get this cable out here. It says it's a USB cable, but I'm assuming it's actually going to be a Thunderbolt 3 cable. Let's have a look. Yes, it is. Now, like I said, there are a few things that are interesting about this. And those things include, firstly, the performance. Apparently, this gets up to 2.7 gigabytes per second in terms of read and write speeds, but we'll go and test that. That's very similar to my Samsung X5 units that I use. In addition, there's the cost. Now, I've just imported this from the US and it cost me about £360. Conversely, this 2TB Samsung X5 that I have cost me about £600, so this is a lot cheaper. Now, there's one final trick up the sleeve of this that I, I think is going to be quite useful, and that is the fact that it also supports USB connectivity rather than just Thunderbolt 3. So theoretically, we can connect this to a Thunderbolt 3 machine. We can also later connect it to a, a USB port on a laptop that perhaps doesn't have Thunderbolt 3. Now that, I think, is going to be quite useful. Now, obviously, we'll get worse performance over USB than we will to Thunderbolt, but we can go and have a look at that. So let's go see how this thing actually performs, and we'll compare it to the Samsung X5 that I also use. So here we are on my iMac Pro. I've got both drives connected here. You can see the Sabrent there and the Samsung X5. I think this, this X5 is only a one terabyte unit. Yes, it is. Whereas this Sabrent is a two terabyte unit. Now, one thing that's worth noting is they are both formatted for Mac OS and they are both encrypted as well. So to start off with, let's have a look at some of the basic benchmarks. I'm just gonna run a Blackmagic speed test. We'll start with a five gig test on the Samsung X5. And there we go. So on the Samsung, we're seeing a 1.9 gigabytes per second write speed and around a 2.5 gigabytes per second read speed. So they are very, very fast drives and they have been my go-to drive for external storage for quite a while. So let's do the same test. We'll run it on the Sabrent. And there we go. So you can see on the Sabrent, I'm getting a very similar write speed at around 1.9 gigabytes per second, but the read speed is a little bit slower at around 2.2, 2.3 gigabytes per second. But given the price differentiation, I'd be quite happy with that. Now, let me just quickly show you why that performance is so important for me. So on here, on the X5, I have a set of virtual machines, which is a lab I'm currently using. It's about 300 gigabytes, so I regularly have to move around data sets of that sort of size. Whereas actually, if you see the kind of real world performance you get here, if I was to just drag and copy that onto the Sabrent, you can see there that it should complete that copy in under two minutes, which saves me an awful lot of time in my working day. Now, like I said in the intro, this Sabrent device does have a bit of a trick up its sleeve in that it isn't just Thunderbolt 3, it also supports USB connectivity. So let's go and also test it over USB. Now one thing I will point out is all my machines are Thunderbolt 3 equipped, so I can't find a way to actually test it over, now let me get this right, is it USB 3.2 Gen 2? Which I believe is the 10 gig connection, basically, because whenever I plug it into any of my Thunderbolt equipped machines, it's gonna connect at Thunderbolt speeds. But what I can do is use a USB-A to USB-C cable. Now what that's going to do is, Again, let me make sure I get the terminology right. I think that's going to connect over USB 3.2 Gen 1, which is a maximum throughput of about 5 gigabytes per second. So let's go and test that because I'm curious to see whether the performance holds up over a USB connection as well. So we're back on my iMac Pro and I've reconnected the Sabrent, but this time using a USB-A to USB-C cable. So I believe that's going to connect using USB 3.2 Gen 1 which if memory serves, that has a five gigabit per second throughput. It's a shame that I can't test the Gen 2, unfortunately, but I can't get a machine to connect because if I do that, it just automatically connects over Thunderbolt. So let's run the same test. I imagine we're gonna see performance here of around the 400 megabytes per second on the read and write speeds. Let's let that run. And there we go, it's virtually bang on. Now, like I say, it's a shame I can't test the 3.2 Gen 2. 
according to the specifications it should hit around 900 megabytes per second i have no reason to disbelieve that based on the performance that i have seen now one thing i do want to look at now is the issue of heat because i have had some devices overheat so for example the crucial x8 that i had i ended up returning them because they slowed down an awful lot when they were under load. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy a large photo library. I think it's about 500 gigabytes. Let's have a look. 420 gigabytes between the two SSDs and we'll see if we can get it under load and then we can have a look at the temperatures. But before that I do that I am just going to reconnect it back over Thunderbolt 3. So we're back on this machine. Now I've got the Cybern connected again back with Thunderbolt 3. Now the temperature of the case currently is around 39 degrees. So what I'm going to do is actually just load the drive. We can do that just by copying things to and from it. So I'm going to drop that 300 gig worth of virtual machines on there. I'm also going to drag that 400 gig picture library there, which is about 35,000 photos and just drop it on the desktop. Now we'll leave that running for a little while because it should now load up the machine or load up the drive anyway, and it should force the temperature up. And then we can have a look and see what the performance is going to be like once the unit is actually hot. So I've left that running, copying that picture library and those virtual machines a few times just to really try and saturate the drive. In terms of temperatures, it hit around 50 degrees. That was about the hottest that I saw. It did become quite hot to the touch, not painfully so, but uh, it was certainly very, very hot. Now, what we can do is we can run the Blackmagic disk speed test, and I suspect we're going to see that this drive has slowed down. There we go. So you can see the write speed, we're hitting around six, 700 megabytes per second. And read, we're only hitting about 500 megabytes. Oh no, it's jumped up now. So we're getting around 900 on the read and about 600 on the write. So temperatures then do seem to affect this drive. And of course, there will also be the slightly faster cache that it will have for uh, the shorter term performance as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this drive cool down now and what we'll do is we'll check out the performance and make sure it comes back. So I've let the drive cool down now. The surface temperature is showing around 29 degrees at the moment. So let's rerun that test. And as you can see, the performance is now back. Now, what conclusion can you take from that? Well, just bear in mind that you also see something very similar on the Samsung X5. It's not as extreme. I tend to lose about 30 to 35% of the performance when the drive is hot. Whereas with this, the hit seems to be a lot higher. Now, you also need to consider what your usage profile is going to be. Now, for me, they are predominantly used to house and run virtual machines. So... For me, I think the saving is worth it, and I don't think I'm really going to run into that heating issue. Whereas, actually, if you're going to be copying thousands of small files to and from this drive quite a lot, you may be better off spending a bit more money for the Samsung X5. But uh, just bear in mind, you will also see that slowdown under heat on those devices as well, but perhaps not as much as on these. Personally, I think this drive for the money so far is proving to be okay, but I, I'm going to use it now for a little while, so if, I'll update this in the comments in a few weeks once I've had time to actually use it in anger.